Amen? Amen. It's not the result of, analy of analyzing. It's not the result of thinking things out. It's not the result of human analysis. It's a gift that comes in. This word of knowledge, you have heard it since the beginning of the school. The Lord is healing that, and the Lord is healing that other thing. But it's not limited to physical healings. I'll talk, talk on this a little bit uh, later on. But it's revelation that is needed at the moment. And the word of wisdom is wisdom that comes from above. It's not the result of human wisdom. It's wisdom that comes from God. Discernment of spirit, it's revelation of what spirit is controlling that situation. What is behind the scenes? What is the motivation? What is the root cause? Is it the Holy Spirit or an evil spirit? It just, it's just a revelation that comes into you. Just like that. Amen. 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 And then we have inspirational gifts. The gift of tongues, which by the way is not your prayer language. This is a gift of tongues that you can start speaking in a tongue and it brings along interpretation. And it acts like a prophecy, okay? At one time I was somewhere and a lady came and said, you were just, I was praying in the spirit. And a lady came and said, you were speaking in Aramaic. You were saying, God have mercy on us. God have mercy on us. I didn't even know that I was speaking Aramaic, but it, it, that was a tongue that came at, at a given moment. So, but our prayer language is not the same. There's a difference, okay? So when there is a tongue that comes an interpretation, it's like a prophetic word. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to talk about the word of knowledge because this is so important that we operate in this and I'm sure that many of you are already operating and are receiving words of knowledge and you have not been able to identify it. So, what is the word of knowledge? It's a revelation of the mind of Christ. Amen? It's a revelation of his mind. What are you thinking, Lord? And he reveals that to you. For example, the words of knowledge that come that the Lord is healing that and the Lord is healing the other, it's the Lord is... In this case, it's, me, it's showing me what the Lord is healing. Amen? Amen? But it doesn't have to be just limited to words of healing. It could be applied to any other thing. Amen? It's the mind of Christ. A word of knowledge can be brought by a picture. Many times I just see pictures of body parts, and I know the Lord is healing that. Amen? Amen. I see eyes, I see intestines. I, many times I see pictures. And so the word of knowledge can come through a picture. The word of knowledge can come through a dream. A word of knowledge can come by an angel. The word of knowledge can come through a song. It's supernatural revelation. Amen? Yes. Amen. It's not information. It's revelation that comes right from God. Yes. And it kicks in when you need it. Amen. Not the result of trying to figure things out. It just is released as you need it. And basically, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are released when you get up and you start doing what the Lord has asked us to do. When we get off the pew of the church and we start evangelizing, healing the sick, demonstrating the kingdom, that's when the gifts kick in. Amen? Amen. So if we stay glued to the pew, nothing much is going to happen. Because when you take that step of faith, that's when the Holy Spirit starts moving in power. And the gifts will be released as you need it. Uh, I went in, uh, a long time ago, I went to my native land of Cuba, and uh, we went with a team from America that only spoke English, so my friend and I, we were the only ones speaking Spanish. And so we made an altar call, or, or the evangelist, the American evangelist said, if you need prayer, come to the front. I mean, it was like a stampede of people running, running to the front and the Holy Spirit let me tell you he was working overtime because before anybody came up to me asking for prayer I already knew the answer I already knew what they needed that's word of knowledge amen, amen. I already knew it before they opened their mouth I was I already was releasing what they needed I mean see I needed to move fast because there were too many people and only my friend and I spoke Spanish so the Holy Spirit moved really fast and he was releasing that revelation. Even before the people spoke, I already knew. 
Amen. I'm just giving you testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And this is how Jesus lived. Jesus walked by revelation. In John 5, 19, says, I can only do what I see my father doing. Everything that Jesus did was originated in revelation from the father. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So a word of knowledge shows us, shows you what the mind of Christ is. It shows you what God wants, and you have, you have to speak it out and act on it. Amen? Amen. If when you're laying hands on the sick or you're praying for a situation, the Lord can show you the root of the problem. That's a word of knowledge, revelation, the root of the problem. Amen? Amen. I mentioned yesterday how I see, uh, sometimes I see words written out. That's a word of knowledge. That's revelation that's, that's growing because I need it. That word of knowledge can give you direction, where to go, where to turn, what God wants, where he wants to take you. It's really wonderful for intercession because you can intercede and hit the target. It helps you how to direct your prayers. It's great with evangelization, amen, because you release a word of knowledge to that person and that person, wow, how did you know that? I was on a plane, this was really funny. That this was, I was on a plane going to Poland and I was seated on the aisle and there was a Muslim man seated by the window and I was reading my Bible all the time. And uh, this Muslim man did not know who he was talking to <laughs> because he, tried, he started to try to evangelize me <laughs> and telling me, you know, that Mohammed this and Mohammed that. I said, sir, I'm a born again, Catholic, spirit-filled believer. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that he's the Son of God. I believe that he was born of the Virgin Mary. He came, he died on the cross. He paid the full penalty for all our sins. He died, he resurrected, he ascended back to the Father, and he will come again one day. Amen. And he looked at me and he said, well, I guess that when he comes back, he will bow down to Mohammed. And I said, excuse me, no. I believe what the word of God says. One day every knee will bow, including the knees of Mohammed. He will bow down to Jesus. Sorry. And so by this time, he, he decided that he could not convince me. So I was watching him. He was very nervous. He could not sit still. Very nervous. And I was like lying, trusting in the Lord. And he opens the mouth and says, I hate to fly. I'm so fearful. I don't like flying. And he's like totally uncomfortable and not being able to relax. I told him, see, that's the difference between you and me. Look at you. You cannot rest. Look at me. I'm falling asleep because I'm trusting in Jesus. Mohammed is dead. Jesus is alive. I can trust in him. It was so funny. Then I said, Lord, show me something about him that, humanly speaking, I could not see. And then the Lord showed me that his knees, his feet and his knees had a lot of pain. So I, I waited on the Lord. I said, show me the right time. And I said, sir, I believe that you have a lot of pain on your feet and on your knees. He looked at me. He was like silenced. He was shocked. And I said, may I pray for you? He says, yes. He had no idea I was going to touch his feet. And I, I laid my hands on his feet and his knees. And I prayed for the Lord to heal him. You know, I released the healing of the kingdom of God. I said, the Lord Jesus loves you so much. But anyways, the plane landed and I never saw him again. But I believe that there were seeds of the gospel sown into that man. Amen. And the fact that I knew that he had pain in his feet and his knees, that really touched him. Amen? Amen. The fact that God is a healer. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Another time in Juncker, uh, were you there when we met that mayor of the... Yes, oh yes. We were in this place that is over 90% Muslim in, in Uganda. And you know, you have to pay respects to the elders of the city. And of course, the elder is a, is a Muslim because there's over 90% Muslim people. So we go inside and this mayor is the most 
un, un, unkind human, very unkind, very proud, very aggressive and hostile. I'm not gonna tell you everything that he was telling us, very unpleasant and accusing, an accusatory, you know, tone that you, we Christians, we Catholics, nothing happened through our ministry and all this baloney. Anyways, and so I'm looking at him and I'm saying, Lord, show me something about this man that uh, I couldn't possibly see with my natural eyes. So in the spirit, I saw that he had a son and he had a lot of problems with his son. That relationship was really bad. So I looked at him and I said, by the way, I see that you have big problem, a big problem in your relationship with your son. He looked at me, he couldn't believe it. I said, but the Lord Jesus wants to heal that. And the Lord Jesus wants to fix this problem in your family. And then I prophesied over him a really good work because the Lord loves this man and has good plans for his life, correct? Amen. Let me tell you, he was changed. Amen. Amen. So we, we, many times the word of knowledge will lead you into a prophetic word. Amen. Amen. It, it will lead you into a prophecy. These words are similar. The prophetic word is meant to encourage, to build up, to comfort. Many times it's a word of destiny. But the word of knowledge is revelation that the Lord gives you at a given moment because you need it to solve that problem or you need direction. You understand what I'm saying? But they work together. The gifts work together. Amen? Amen? In John chapter 4, one of the most beautiful passages, John chapter 4, it's the encounter with Jesus with the Samaritan woman. That was totally word of knowledge. Go through Samaria. Good men, good religious people would not cross through Samaria. But Jesus was not bound by religious spirits. Amen? Amen? He lived only doing what he saw the Father doing. Amen. The Father said, go through Samaria. And he did. And he had an amazing encounter with a Samaritan woman. And then he had revelation. As he was speaking to her, he could read her heart. And he told her, go get your husband. And then she said, I don't have the husband. And he said, you have spoken the truth because you've had five and the one you're with now is not your husband. And that, you could say, that could be a word of knowledge or discernment of spirit, but it's revelation. And that word of knowledge caused this woman to run back into the town and say, I think I've met the Messiah. And if you keep reading, that, that entire area came to Jesus through one word of knowledge. Amen? Amen. This is the power that we have in the Holy Spirit. We have amazing gifts that we don't even tap into them. We don't use them. Because this is a powerful, powerful gift. It, it, was, it, it was through a word of knowledge that the Lord said, put on schools of the Holy Spirit. That was a word of knowledge. He was sharing with me what he wanted. And the worship conference in America, Days of Glory, that was a word of knowledge. The Glory House of Miami, the, home, the house for the rescued victims from sex slavery. That was a word of knowledge. You see, he's always trying to communicate. There is revelation flowing. We just need to be sensitive. And we gotta get rid of that religious demon, which we did today, amen? Yeah. Because it puts a blood on the flow of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. So the word of knowledge uh, is a very powerful gift. So in Acts chapter eight, Let's go there. Beautiful encounter. Philip is evangelizing in Samaria. There is revival taking place. People are getting delivered from demons, getting healed. Acts chapter 8. The kingdom is being released. And in verse 26, But an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. So an angel came and told Philip to go to, the, to Gaza, a desert road. This was a word of knowledge. And this doesn't make sense. To leave behind revival where you're ministering to hundreds and hundreds of people, to leave that and go to the desert where there is no one. Amen? But Philip obeyed. 
See, we have to obey. Philip obeyed, and he had an encounter with an eunuch from Ethiopia. And he led, this, he, he led him to Jesus and baptized this man. And this was the man that took the gospel back to Africa. Amen? Amen. So I want you to see how the Holy Spirit moves. And in this case, it was uh, an angel that spoke to Philip. Let's go to Acts chapter 10. This is Cornelius, a Roman centurion. He was a prayerful man. He still did not know the Lord, but he, 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 the Lord was drawing him to himself. Verse 3, about the ninth hour of the day, he clearly saw in a vision an angel of God who had just come into him and said to him, Cornelius, and fixing his gaze upon him and being much alarmed, he said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now dispatch some men to Joppa and send for a man named Simon, who is also called Peter. So this is how the gospel came to the Gentiles. It started with an angel speaking to Cornelius. Go get Peter and bring him to your home. Amen? Amen. Don't you think that the Holy Spirit wants us to move like this? Yes. 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 Receiving words of knowledge throughout yes. the day, yes. Yes. guiding our steps, showing us Everywhere we go where a person needs Jesus, where a person needs healing. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I remember when I first came to the Lord, I, I had a word of knowledge. Because this, this, two, this was a married couple that knew Jesus way before me. And I had a word of knowledge that the Lord said, call him. And call him and tell him to be patient with his wife. <laughs> That this is a temporary thing with a wife. That everything's gonna be okay. Anyways, I didn't. I did not want to call. I'm being honest. I didn't want to call because I was a little afraid of his reaction because he was, you know, a macho man. <laughs> Anyways, but I, one day I, I, I just sensed that I, the urgency. I had to. I had to do it. I said, Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. See, what, whenever he tells you to do something, he supplies the grace. Amen? Amen? So I received the grace, and I called this man, this friend of mine at work, and I said, you know, I'm calling because I sense that the Holy Spirit wants me to tell you to be patient with your wife because this is whatever she's going through, it's going to pass. Just be patient with her. This is a temporary situation. Just be patient. And I could sense in his silence that he was really angry at me. I just sensed it. He was not happy with my phone call. But that evening when he went home, he told his wife, I was writing a letter of divorce to divorce you. And, and suddenly so-and-so called me and told me to be patient with you, that this would pass. You know, these people are still married. Amen? <laughs> I, you know, the Lord used me to intervene. Imagine the perfect timing of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He was writing that letter to divorce his wife. And then I called at that moment. See how the Lord wants to intervene through us in people's lives and release his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is amazing. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Even in Acts chapter 9, when Saul becomes Paul, there was a disciple called Ananias, and the Lord appears to him in a vision. Ananias is praying, and the Lord tells him in a vision. This is Acts chapter 9, and verse 11, And the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judah, for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for behold, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he did to the saints in Jerusalem. And so Ananias is talking to the Lord, basically saying, are you sure that I'm supposed to go and lay hands on this man? He's here ready to kill Christians. But the Lord says, go. He's my anointed. I have chosen him. 
So Ananias went and laid hands on Saul, and Saul was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and the scales came off his eyes. Amen? Amen. So I, I want you to see how God partners with human beings. Amen? 2 Corinthians 6.1 says that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, we collaborate with the Holy Spirit. In other words, we partner with the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 6.1, we collaborate with the Holy Spirit. This is why we cannot remain passive. The Holy Spirit will not do anything on his own. He's always looking for a person that is available that will say yes. That's what he's looking for, basically, is a yes. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So this word of knowledge is revelation. It can come in uh, many different ways, a picture, a vision, a dream, an angel, a song. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. One time when I was um, in Tanzania, I had an invitation to go to Catholic radio and television. And to get to the downtown area, we had to catch we had to catch a taxi. So we walked the dirt road <laughs> out onto the main road, and we caught this taxi. And uh, I didn't even see the face of the taxi man, but I I knew he was young. I, I was only looking at his back, but the Lord showed me his heart. This was a word of knowledge. I saw that he was totally dissatisfied with his life. I could see it. I could see it. And so his name is Michael. And I said, Michael, I can see that you're totally dissatisfied with your life. It started with the word of knowledge. He's going like this. <laughs> I said, but I am here in your taxi cab, not by accident. I believe that the Lord brought me here. And I, and I have to tell you, you, I see that you're dissatisfied with your life, but there is a new life that Jesus wants to give to you. And it's called the abundant life. And the Lord gave me a vision and I saw Michael really dressed in a different way, and I saw him with a happy face, and I started to prophesy over his life. Wow, I mean, the presence of God was in that taxi. I could write a book of taxis, okay? <laughs> but anyways, but this, this was so powerful what happened, so we got to the downtown area, with, to the archdiocese, the, the building. I told my friend we need to lead him to Jesus, and we need to baptize him in the Holy Spirit. So Michael gave his life to Jesus, and we laid hands for the baptism of the Holy Spirit inside his car. This man started to shake with the power of God. The Spirit of God just came into him big time. Hours later, after we're done, I, we come out, out of the building, Michael is waiting for us. <laughs> so we take the taxi back, back home. And the Lord told me, word of knowledge, invite him to the seminar that's starting today. It was Monday morning. So I told Michael, there is a seminar starting today in Agape Center. It will last through Sunday. I invite you to come, and I will pay for you, because the Lord said, pay for him. And so I said, I will pay for you. And Michael said, I will go. I will show up there tonight. And you know what? I was so pleasantly surprised when he came. Because many times I invite people all over the place and, and they don't show up. But Michael showed up. And he stayed the whole week. And you could see the transformation in this man. It turns out that Michael's mother was a very devout Catholic. I imagine that one of the things that she was doing was praying for her son. Amen? Yeah. Imagine how happy she became when Michael told her, this American lady came and invited me and talked to me about Jesus, invited me to the seminar. And now I'm off to Agape for a seminar. I mean, the mother, I'm sure, was jumping for joy, <laughs> giving expression to the Lord of her happiness. So during the week, you could see the transformation in Michael. He got up and he said, I already called my friends and I told them I'm not going back to that lifestyle of drinking and drugging and sexual immorality. I'm done with that. Wow. And so he started to give testimony. and. Uh, Michael's father actually said this when they told him that his son was in Agape Center doing a, a retreat, a conference. The father said, only if I see it with my eyes will I believe. Because the son was so backslidden and just living such a wrong kind of life that the father was not a believer, okay? He did not believe. 
but he said, only if I see it with my eyes. So on Sunday, they came to the Mass, and they tell me that the father was looking for his son, Michael, couldn't find him, because Michael's face was changed and covered by the glory. Oh, the but the story gets better. <laughs> so Sunday after Mass, Michael comes and says, can I stay for the next week? Because there's another seminar. Starting, I said, you can come next week, I will pay for you. And so it was amazing that, I mean, the transformation in Michael. Now he was singing the new song. Oh. He was just sold out for Jesus and singing to the Lord. I mean, it was so beautiful what happened. That Sunday, the, the whole family came. The father, the mother, the kids, and we were able to lay hands on the entire family. Wow. We laid hands on the father, on the mother, on everybody. It was so beautiful. This is one word, one word of knowledge. And then the next year, this is so beautiful, the next year, I'm back in that center, and I'm teaching on prophetic evangelism, and I'm giving the example of Michael, okay? And so my translator is saying, wait, Maria, his father is right there. <laughs> so now this father of Michael that used to be an unbeliever, did not believe, now he became like a disciple of the Lord. He wow. is in Agape Center for every mass, every, every retreat, every conference, every workshop. Amen? Amen. The father is on fire. When he saw the change in his son, but... Point to the testimony, the word of knowledge. Amen? It's so important that we open ourselves because the gift is inside of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 33, 3, call out to me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and hidden things that you do not know. Brothers and sisters, this is all about relationship and intimacy with the Lord. Amen? Amen. He is the vine, we are the branches. We have to be connected with him. We have to be connected with Him. And we are connected by the Spirit of God. Amen? We are in Christ. This is who we are. Do you have any testimony? Sure. I thought about when Maria was sharing about the taxi cab. And she said she could write a book on taxi cabs. Once, my flight was delayed getting into the city. This was actually in Boston, and the cab took me, it was about, I believe, one or two in the morning. It was late. The cab dropped me off at the wrong address. It was so dark that I could not tell, and I gave him the street number that I had, the house number. He dropped me off at the wrong place, put my suitcase out on the sidewalk, and took off. Well, I went up and I thought, this doesn't look like the place that we stayed at the last time. I knew Maria was already there. I and mean, you went into a little entryway and um, then you would go up the steps to where we were staying. And they were supposed to have a key under a plant. So I just go and I open the door to step inside the house. And there's a man asleep on the couch and a big dog. I had gone to the wrong house. I didn't have the phone number of the homeowners. Um, I wasn't sure what to do, and I stepped out, of, and I left the house, and I'm with him. And, I, and just a word of knowledge came to go in this direction, and I started walking up the street, and all of a sudden, a house, the top of it, it lit up. It was like an x-ray machine, and I could see the furniture inside. I started walking towards the light in the direction, and then when getting there, sure enough, it was maybe a block and a half. Uh, it was the right home. And then another time, went into a restaurant, and when that the, when that this lady came up, you know, visions of word knowledge works together a lot. And um, the Lord showed, gave me a vision of daisies growing out, and he said the word daisy. Daisies are significant. Well, when the, when the server came, and I looked at her, and I said, do you know Jesus? And she said, well, and she said, I, I know about Jesus. And I said, well, the word Daisy is special to you. And she looked at me, and then her eyes filled with tears. She had left her name badge at home that day. She put on in her another server's 
um, the little jacket that they would wear with a name badge. Her name was Daisy. Her favorite flowers were Daisy. And then that opened up the opportunity to minister to her and to share Jesus with her. And she had been out of church for years. And she said she was going to go that Sunday because for the Lord to give a vision and a word of knowledge to someone traveling from another state that she knew that she was special and that she needed to go back to church on Sunday. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. Another taxi testimony from Tanzania. <laughs> uh, we went downtown on a free day, Dar es Salaam, and we were in the middle of the downtown and to get over to the downtown area, we took like three buses. It's not a lot of fun. Those mini buses, it's like sardines in a can, okay? And we, it took forever. But anyways, while we're getting ready to go back home, I heard the voice of the Lord, word of knowledge, go back in a taxi. So my friend Isidori went and got a taxi. First of all, Isidori said, no, Maria, no, not in a taxi, it's too expensive. I said, Isidori, I heard the voice of the Lord. My money is his money. Amen. Go get a taxi, please. Amen. <laughs> so he got a taxi. When we sat down on the taxi, I knew it was all about the taxi driver. His name was George. And he was a backslidden Catholic that had not been to church in at least 30 years. And we got into that, we were in that taxi, we started to minister to George. We prophesied the word of the Lord over George. That softened his heart. He repented, he gave his life to Jesus. It was beautiful. I said, George, do you have a Bible? And he says, no, I don't have a Bible. I said, before I go home, I promise you, you're gonna have a Bible in your hands. And, and yeah, my, and my friend told me where to go to prayer group. So. What happened the next day, Isidori goes back to town, to the same place where he found the taxi, and he's carrying a Bible to give it to George. And uh, Isidori says that he's walking, you know, to give the, the Bible to, to George, and he sees George talking like to 11 other taxi drivers. Oh. And when, Isid when George saw him, he said, this is the man, this is one of them. Look, he's coming now, this is, this is the people that were talking to me about God. See, when, I, when we started to minister to George, George said, I've been driving taxis for 20 years. Nobody has ever talked to me about God. You are the first people. Something Amen. wrong in this Amen. world. Amen. Christians are so silent. Anyways, so Isidori goes, and George is jumping up and down. This is the man, this is the man. And to make the long story short, Isidori led 11 other taxi drivers to Jesus. Okay? Right there in the middle of downtown Dar es Salaam. See, one word of knowledge, it releases the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Also, uh, a word of knowledge, go visit the pygmies. It's a beautiful story, but everything changed and shifted for the pygmies because up until that time, the, 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 there, there are certain uh, parishes all around those mountains these picnics were being neglected. They were not being taken care of. But now they're being baptized. Now they're coming to the Lord. They're doing communion. I mean, they're receiving the sacraments. They're coming to Mass. The priests are reaching out to them. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A word of knowledge. Hallelujah. Let's go to John 5, 19. Because this is Jesus and this is for us. Verse 19, Jesus therefore, John 5, 19. Jesus therefore answered and was saying to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, these things the Son also does in like manner. And so Jesus is very clear here, saying, I only do what I see my Father doing. And now in verse 20, we see the key to revelation lifestyle, prophetic lifestyle, revelation lifestyle. This is the key, verse 20. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself is doing. And greater works than this will he show him that you may marvel. 
Okay, for the love, for the father loves the son. That word in the Greek is not agape love. That word in the Greek is filio. It means friendship. The Holy Spirit is saying that there was such a friendship between the Father and the Son. Amen? That this is why the Father showed everything to Jesus. Yes. It's not because you read it and you assume, well, it's the Son. He's the Son. You read it and you don't go into deep into what, what word is being used. And in your mind you say, well, of course, the Father showed everything to Jesus. Jesus is the Son. But that's not what the Word of God is saying. It is saying that the Father showed everything to Jesus because of the friendship between the Father and the Son. So that's an invitation for us. Do you want to be a friend of Jesus? Yes. How, how good of a friend do you want to be of Jesus? It's up to you. No limitations. Amen? Amen. No limitations. Amen. If you want to walk by revelation, you've got to be a friend of the Lord. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Because... He reveals his secret to his friends. He reveals yeah. things to his friends. Yeah. 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 And now we go to John 15 to the Last Supper. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And then in verse 14, you are my friends if you do what I command you. So that's, that's the qualifying point. I don't know how to express it, but if we love Jesus, if we say we are his friends, how do we know we are his friends? If we do what he says. Amen? If being a doer of the word, you are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants. For the slave, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. Are you understanding yes. that, that what the Lord really wants is friendship with us? Think about a good friend. Think about friendship. You make room for that person. Amen? Amen. You make time for that person. Amen. When that person calls, you answer right away. Amen? Amen? You can trust that person. You can share your biggest secrets with that person. Amen? Amen. You can share your life with that person because that person loves you and will not betray you. He, Jesus is looking for friends. He's, so that means we need to carve out time to spend with him. Yes. To hear his voice. Amen. To be in his word. Amen? Amen? Because I'm telling you, Jesus has very few friends. He has a lot of church attendees, but very few friends. Because if he had a lot of friends, our nations would be different. Amen. 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 Totally Amen. different. Amen to that. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give to you. Okay? So when we are obeying the voice of the Lord, we are his friend, he has shared his heart with us and we, are, we set out to do what he has asked. We ask the Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever is needed will come to us. Amen? Whatever. No limitations. Absolutely no limitations. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is so wonderful. Yes. We walk with Him. See, we have to be properly aligned with Him. Properly aligned with the kingdom. Understanding why, why are we alive? <laughs> I'm alive for Jesus. And then we have to carry the heart of God. We are here to love people powerfully. Amen? Amen. How do we love them powerfully? By sharing the gospel with them. By healing them. By setting them free. Amen? Amen. Because love is an action. 
Love is not just, I love you so much. No, love is an action. Show your love by sharing Jesus with people, by being, making yourself available to pray with them, to heal them, amen, to set them free. Hallelujah. Amen. Our lives will change, and the Lord will start revealing his secrets to us. And he, as I said with the story of the chicken, if we have to start being faithful with the small, so that he can trust us with bigger things. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's get up and let's cry out to God. Let's ask the Lord for words of knowledge. We're going, for the sake of time, we're going to be specific. We ask the Lord to give us words of knowledge of healings that people need now. Amen. Let's pray in the spirit. You can come out and pour up, 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 up. speak to us, Lord. Give us words of knowledge of Healings that people need in this place today. Oh, 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 o